U.S. President Donald Trump called Prime Minister Narendra Modi to ask him to release shipments of hydroxychloroquine tablets hoping they might be a game-changer in the fight against COVID-19. Whether they work or not, that call underscored how the pandemic has turned the world order upside down. As a new immigrant in America in the 90s, I was used to thinking of the U.S. as the safe zone and India as the dangerous outback swarming with exotic diseases. I remember pots of water being boiled at my home every time I returned to Kolkata. Indian water was deemed unsafe for my Americanized digestive system. It seems an ironic twist that now an American president is looking to India for help in keeping Americans safe, that too with the drug used to fight malaria. America returned or London returned used to be badges of pride in middle class India. Your stock went up in the neighborhood with that visa stamp. I always brought back extra Kame soaps and Kit Kat chocolates to distribute among the neighbors, cheap treats in America that still carried foreign returned cachet in India, once we brought back Kame soaps. Now we bring back the virus. Foreign returned has acquired a pattern of suspicion rather than pride. The foreign returned are sent to quarantine much like Americans once did to all immigrants during the cholera epidemic of 1892. Parents in India worry more about their children in America than in some other corner of India. Countries like Italy are regarded with trepidation the way the West traditionally regarded yellow fever zones in Africa. Foreigners in India, usually on the top of high society's guest list, are objects of suspicion these days. When my friends Milena Chilomarkov and her mother, who live in Kolkata about half a year, opted for repatriation back to Germany after commercial flights ceased in India, their biggest hurdle was getting someone to take them to the hotel from where the evacuees would leave for the airport. The cab services that would have once clamored to take foreigners were reluctant to ferry anyone who looked foreign. To go or not to go has become a difficult question, a U.S. consular official said while some 7,000 people had registered for repatriation to the U.S., when their staff cold called 800 people for one of the evacuation flights, they got only 10 positive responses. I hear stories of Americans choosing to go back to the States because they are worried about aging parents back in America, but I'm sure whether it's the safest thing to do. The old immigrant story turned on its head. It's not that India is a safe haven from the virus. While the death toll has crossed into three figures, the low levels of testing make it unclear what kind of infection rates India is grappling with or where hotspots will erupt next. The point is that for the first time America feels no safer than India. Even more disorienting. The West is having to look to the East for survival tips from Namaste to anti-malaria drugs. Until recently leaders like Boris Johnson and Donald Trump had downplayed COVID-19, Trump calling it a hoax that would disappear like magic. The West was open for business as usual unlike Asia with its heavy-handed lockdowns, thermal scans and flight bans. Now as the toll spirals in America and Boris Johnson emerges from the ICU, Indian academic Mukul Kesavan writes there is a first world defined by pandemic readiness, its capital is Seoul. Addressing his party, Modi claimed the speed with which India took decisions in a comprehensive and holistic manner is not only being talked about in the world but is being praised by the World Health Organization. Brazil's president flatters India by evoking images of Hanuman bringing lifesaver herbs from the Himalayas. The fact is countries like India have long sought America's favor. They are not used to America seeking favors from it. But this is not the time for schadenfreude. Rather it is about shared suffering. One just hopes that when we emerge from this pandemic, we will remember these lessons with humility. My friend Milena has reached Berlin with her mother. After undergoing 10 days of India's stringent lockdown, she felt compelled to hand out sanitizers to young people sitting too close together on the train in Germany. 
She has also figured out what gifts she could bring back from India that her friends in Germany might truly value the way Kame Soaps once raised my stock in Kolkata. She is gifting them something the West covets in these days of corona panic but is of little value in India, rolls of toilet paper. Disclaimer, views expressed above are the author's own, let's block ads. Why?